Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the status report highlight for the 31st of July 2018. Today we have quite an exciting status report for you guys as we have several topics to cover. To start things off, Eugene is talking about the long awaited content update for 0.63. Next our brand manager Martin will finally reveal some information on how we intend to deliver our promises to bring DayZ to our fans on Xbox this year. Peter is talking about the introduction of scopes, the continuing debate of aimgate and shotguns, plus as a first glance at the return of vehicles, so buckle up and let's drive into it. So let's get started with lead producer Eugen, who mentions the content patch while delayed is shaping up nicely, and the three main reasons that the patch has not been released sooner are client freezes happening in random intervals causing 10 plus seconds of no response whatsoever, the issue manifested itself in specific situations and actions of multiple players in a single bubble, we have found the cause and were able to confirm last week that it's no longer happening. Stability issues, crashes, VME, which I think stands for virtual machine environment, but please correct me if I'm wrong, and asserts on the branch. While important, these are definitely considered less damaging on the whole gameplay experience. However, we should be good to go. And of course, scopes. During the implementation, we came across a large number of issues from animations, clipping, shaking, and more that needed to be solved. Now that we have talked about these, I wanted to confirm that the content patch is getting released on the stress test branch tomorrow, and that it will be focused on player versus player interaction. Damn it, I'm on holiday for a week tomorrow, why you do this daisy team? During this period, we might try to raise the player numbers per shard, and see where the additional optimizations can take us. After the stress test period is over, we will port the patch over to experimental and enable the switch to do the same for server owners. Oh yeah, you guys, what? I'm looking forward to the vanilla experience as there is so much more to explore with these new features. While all this was happening, the team was working on the beta features. We're running several work groups focused on important parts of DayZ, specifically weapons, infected, vehicles and actions. As of now, the general production is running two weeks behind and we are ready to get back on track. That's a pretty good start to this week's status report, but I'm going to move on to brand manager Martin now, take a few snippets regarding the Xbox launch. Let me just get this bit of information out the way quickly first. If you go into Gamescom from the 21st to the 25th of August, the dev team, well, 11 Daisy developers will be at the event, and they will be there to meet all you peeps and show you the game on all three platforms. Three? That's PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, with the PS4 version being a show premiere. As for the Xbox One version though, we're still applying some minor changes to the control scheme, we're getting our server infrastructure ready, we're awaiting fixes for some Xbox specific issues, UI, some user actions missing, etc. Despite these issues, the progress with PC builds and some platform specific optimizations already bring a good enough gameplay to Xbox, along with a generally very good client and server performance. So as soon as we get ahead of the listed issues, and as long as there aren't any new ones appearing, we will proceed to the next step which is closed preview, which should be arriving rather quickly. The main early access game preview itself should be here by the end of the summer, and it looks like they may meet that deadline. But Martin would like to clarify one important thing, the general timing of the Xbox One release. Up until now, we've been counting on releasing the Xbox game preview shortly after Daisy hits beta on PC. Since we're able to come up with the Xbox version of our PC content rather quickly, and we're also enjoying tremendous support from Microsoft, we'll probably take a turn on that position. If things keep going well, we may see an Xbox game preview release happening before the PC beta. Martin would also like to clarify that the PC development is always priority and that any progress with the Xbox builds always comes from the PC development. Of course, this is a highlight and I've taken the most important snippets of information. And with that said, let's move on to my main man, lead designer, Peter. As mentioned in our last status report, when it comes to firearms, we are focused mainly on scopes right now. In the following GIF, you can see the new PSO-1 scope in action together with the new post processes. Aiming down the sights uses depth of field to blur the firearm while keeping the front sight focused. The scoped in view is using a circular mask to blur the surroundings and create spherical distortion to make the magnification effect more prominent. The next GIF shows how the combination of ADS and scope is operated in a case where such possibility of firearm and scope allows it. The last mode used for precise aiming sights or scope is remembered, and the next time the aiming action is called, it switches right into it. Regarding point shooting, not precise aiming, in other words hipfire from rays, 
there was sway applied from the very first implementation. However, it uses the same strength as in ADS, which isn't enough for such a situation. It led to the belief that the projectiles are always landing in the exact center of the screen. Now, we have a multiplier for sway implemented to make it harder to hit targets further away. On the screenshot below, the left target was fired at with point shooting. The right target was fired at with ADS, both using a pistol at 25 meters. You can see the results displayed by the trajectory lines and their bullet impacts. So the left target would be hipfire and the right target would be ADS aiming down sight. Last but not least, along with the implementation of the pump action shotgun in the new weapon system, we found what was wrong with the buckshot all the time. After a rewrite, buckshot are now spawning the set amount of independent projectiles which are getting dispersed with distance and can penetrate materials. Peter is excited this change will make shotguns finally valuable and deadly, exactly how you would expect. Now let's move on to lead animator Victor with some very interesting short clips of a V3S. In the past two weeks our animators have been working on vehicles steering poses so the character can steer the wheel nicely. This includes animations like starting the vehicle, adjustments of enter-exit animations and idles. Please be aware that everything you see here is still work in progress and subject to change. In order, these clips are showing getting into a V3S, starting a V3S, new steering wheel turning animations, and jumping out of the vehicle and getting back in. Other animations that have been worked on are surrender restrained implementation and missing animations, hit reactions for crouch and prone for when player character gets hit, and bug fixing related to firearms. Good work, Victor. Good work. And finally, for this week's status report highlight, sound designer Philip, who has just a very brief update from the audio team. New reload sounds for the MP133 pump action shotgun, new sounds for falling trees and bushes after hack tree and bush action, shooting controller for ambient sounds, which means birds and insects go quiet for a while after shooting. Now that's pretty neat. Coast ambience is positional now. You hear the ambience from the direction where the coast is. Sound occlusion for gunshots. Gunshots are attenuated if there is any obstacle, like a wall or structure, between the shooter and the listener. All in, this was a really good status report this week, and I hope you guys learned some new things regarding Daisy's development. But of course, always read the status report yourselves in full for all the information that they hold. And don't forget to read the community spotlight down the bottom for some amazing created content from you guys out there on the YouTubes, the Twitches, the Twitters. You guys are awesome. And if you enjoy the content I create, don't forget to leave a like. Thank you for subscribing, and I'll see you peeps next time.